<laughs> All right, here we I go. Thought it was good. Three, no, this should be the intro right here. Continue on, Josh. <laughs> three, two, you idiots! I hate you so much. I have to edit all this out now. <laughs> ah, okay, here we go. Three, <laughs> two, one. It's the IDP show. Now you know. Welcome to the IDP show. I'm your host, Josh Raymer, joined as always in the show check, Adam Markham. Bobby Reynolds and joined in the virtual so check. It is an annual tradition at this point. PFF's finest, John Macri. John, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I am uh, excited. Obviously, the draft is wrapped and uh, we get to see some landing spots and draft capital sorted all out now. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, help our listeners and viewers kind of sort it out as well, because rookie drafts are going to be in full swing here um, in the next week or so. Yes, sir. We'll have a mock draft episode for y'all on Monday. Bobo, you're working on mock 3.0 right now. Yeah. Trying to suss out that first round is not easy right now mm. in one QB rookie drafts. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. There was a lot of good landing spots there for receivers at the be end of the first beginning of the second. Um, you know, what do we feel about Bowers and uh, Michael Mayer now down there in Las Vegas catching balls from Gardner Minshew and company? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy. And the running backs didn't really get a whole lot of draft capital and we didn't think they were going to, but one in the second, it was uh, even worse than I think what we thought it was. Yeah. Gonna be. I mean, like there's going to be some that are some nice dart throws and stuff, but whew, I don't know. Might elevate a little IDP for us. What do you think, Addy? Doubt it. Doubt it. I don't You're think in a draft right now. It is super there has, flex. There have been, well, actually, that's not true. Uh, Junior Colson was actually the first IDP off the board. We were just that's, talking about that's that. That's what I was asking Bobby here. about. Is Junior Colson in first round? Not, not saying you would pick him there, yeah. but is he in consideration? Is he in the conversation? In the first round, absolutely not. That's, okay. that's absurd. Smart. This was, uh, I think he was like in the second round, like a mid second round. He's pick. like a really sexy landing spot. Yeah, yeah, it's a great landing Yeah, we're going to talk about him tonight as uh, probably one of the, maybe the best landing spot of all the IDPs. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that first round. John, do you think we get any first round IDPs, one QB drafts at this point with some of these landing spots? No, I, I'm with you guys. I, I think it'd be crazy to to do it. I, I mean, I got some leagues where these guys are like linebacker sickos and they they almost every year we get a linebacker going in the first round and just like, yeah. I can't get behind it. No, I think you're right. I think we, we wondered if maybe one of these edge rushers would be in consideration because we see that sometimes the miles Garrett's Nick Bosa's right. you who's know. the one that would be in consideration. Yeah. That's the question for John. It'd probably be layout to lot to. Yeah, no, it would be a lot to for me for sure. But I, not in the first, I, I still think there's, there's wide receivers. There's, even I think you could quarterbacks make the case. There's probably like, eight or nine guys that absolutely are like should be in the first round. And then you can argue, I think about the last three or four, Mm -hmm. but I just don't think, I don't think an IDP should really crowd their way into that first round conversation at this point. So even if, even if you're in a big play league and you've got a need at edge, I think just wait. Yeah. Just wait, wait and get the value. One of those, one of those three is probably going to drop. If you're getting one of those three, like you don't need to spend up to get the other one, right? Like you should still be very happy to get one of Verse or Turner as your your consolation prize, right? If Latu say is the first guy off the board, or if it's the other way around, if it's Turner, if it's Verse, you know, you never know. People might like love the the Rams landing spot more than anything. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think you, you're getting one of those three. You're, I think you're happy, and you just take the best value there. I think there's a chance you could get one of those guys possibly in the beginning of the third because the QBs are going to be pushed oh, back. The, the running backs yeah. are going to be pushed into the second. I mean, Junior Colson might jump into the second. So there's a chance you could get one of those I top agree. three edge rushers at the beginning of the third. Now, this is a super flex league. This is uh, no position left behind. I think it's the no position left behind league. As of the 308. None of the edges have gone. Really? Linebacker off the board, though? You said Junior Colson went? Junior Colson went at 207. Huh. This is, again, super flex, tight end premium. Um, but yeah, it actually, it looks like Tyler Newbin just went at 306. And none of the neither of none of the edge rushers have gone. So you never know. That's how these things go. Well, no position left behind scoring. I feel like is kind of a people kind of draft for need a little bit more. Yeah. I kind of did the same thing in this one. I need to run him back. So I, 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 I've been targeting running backs early. But yeah, I mean, I'll I've got a shot at one of these edge rushers coming up. So I'll probably take one of them. Let's go. Let us know as you're on the clock, which uh, which one you end up going with. So 
Tonight, we thank you all for joining us. We are going to be talking best and worst IDP landing spots from the 2024 NFL Draft with John Macri. We've done this every year now. I think this is the fourth year we've done this, John. So, so. Um, it'll be the yeah. last two. It'll be the last, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like Kyle Shanahan famously said, I can't guarantee any of us will be alive on Monday. So um, let's talk, though, John, about everyone's favorite position right off the top. What we're going to do is sort of alternate best and worst, and then we'll finish up with some kind of rapid fire best landing spots or some worst, John. I think you were kind of a... Um, a masochist when it comes to the IDP landing <laughs> spots, not liking where a lot of these guys landed, but you did have some that you liked. And we're going to start in green Bay with Edger and Cooper landing there with the Packers. Tell us why Cooper, not Cooper to the other Cooper you thought was a good landing spot there in green Bay. Yeah. I mean, this is potentially one of the, I think what would have been one of the better landing spots coming into the draft, but not, necessarily right away for 2024. Like I, I think, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised to see Isaiah McDuffie start in 2024, just because he, he kind of earned that role last year, filling in, I'd say admirably, admirably when, you know, Quaker and, and Devondre Campbell were injured and look, he's a, he's a former six round pick, right? So he's not scaring you off by any means, but I, I think the amount of snaps that he played last year when those starters were out and then, you know, even working in there during the playoffs a bit, rotating with Devondre Campbell out a little bit more was w- a bit telling in that they they like him to have a bit of a role. So that being said, obviously, Edron Cooper, he's a better prospect coming out, has some great draft, draft capital behind him now in the second round. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to let him maybe sit for, for a little bit, see what's there with McDuffie, maybe let that contract expire at the end of the year before they, they do turn to Cooper. I, that part wouldn't surprise me, but I do, I do like this landing spot long-term here for, for Edron Cooper. I think it is one of the better ones um, for the linebackers in this class and everything that he brings to the table, love him as a run defender and a, a potential blitzer as well. So um We'll be interested to see how Green Bay utilizes these guys. Patty, you posted the uh, big baby Quay gif in the tunnel, throwing a fit with, I believe the tweet was Quay Walker. You are on notice after they selected Edron Cooper and uh, later on in the draft, Tyrone Hopper as well. So yeah. two linebackers coming in. Yes. Vondre Campbell is now in San Francisco. Isaiah McDuffie is still there, but uh, you think yeah. a big, Cry baby Quay may be in a little bit of hot water here. I think the writing's on the wall right there, you know. Um, not good for him. Yeah, I mean, and the and Mac can probably speak more to this, but I'm pretty sure the PFF grades weren't that great last year. Um, yeah. so it's just not not good if you're a, a Quay Walker stand. Now I do think like he'll be fine. Quay Walker's gonna get an opportunity somewhere else, I think. Uh, but I think it's just it's a it's a hint that his time in Green Bay is coming to an end. So I mean it's it, it does it does probably make his dynasty value take a bit of a hit because it's never a good thing when a team doesn't want you. But he's still young. He can still get, you know, he, he can still bounce back, be better in a different situation. Um Green Bay does that though. Did you like they they took so many damn safeties in this draft too and then loaded up on linebackers like we know they always like they just love to pad that depth there. But it, it's gonna make it. Uh, it's gonna make it pretty pretty scary if you're a, if Quay Walker owner next year, um, or if you've drafted him in these best balls because I feel like his leash just got a lot shorter. Yeah, Babo, um, you Addy had the uh, Quay Walker tunnel gif. You had mower thought. I was the only loser who wasn't tweeting today. Mm-hmm. Apparently, you had a mower thought mm-hmm. about Edger and Cooper. What had you thinking about Coop Daddy on the tractor today? Uh, you're right, Addy. Green Bay drafted three safeties. Um, Drafted a running back when they brought back, um, yeah. uh, who was it? The guy with the huge, Josh, uh, AJ, Dillon AJ Dillon and oh, yeah. signed Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Um, what was your question, Josh? My mower thought, yes, your mower uh, yeah, thought it's just kind of, you know, I got to thinking a little bit about Adam's dynasty ranks and I feel like it peaked Quay Walker value. Quay was probably sniffing being like a top five linebacker mm-hmm. there when it was like peak Quay and Devondre Campbell season. Now Adams kind of slowly drifted Quay down to about the LB15 range, which feels um it feels a little bit safer, you know, because 12.3 points per game in 2022, 13.6 points per game in 23 um is fine, but it's not 
you know, he's not lighting up the scoreboard for us at all. So, yeah, I agree. I think uh, Edrian Cooper for me, um, I know we'll talk about a couple other linebackers, but Edrian Cooper to me is pretty clearly the uh, he's a linebacker that I want out of this draft. Um, there are some others that walk into better opportunities in 2024, um, but I'm still hot and bothered by Edrian Cooper. I think it could be sooner rather than later for for my boy Coop. So, John, I think we're all pretty, pretty hot in the pants. Got a, you know, a nice, you know, nice hot set of pants on for Edger and Cooper. But what do you think about Adam's assertion there that this is bad news for Crybaby Quay's dynasty value? Yeah, it could be right. Like it's it's interesting. They're they're going to bring in a new defensive coordinator now, right? Halfley from uh, I think it was Boston College um, where he was. So it, it could potentially be a, a different defensive scheme. I, I haven't looked too much into that Boston College defense too much. Um, yet but there's definitely potential for you know as nfl teams move to more one linebacker systems i wouldn't be surprised to to see green bay kind of go back to that they had done it had had success with it before and now as their linebackers kind of struggle like quay walker has i you know there's definitely potential for that so um i I do think quay walker you know having that first round draft capital to his name like he's going to keep getting shots in the nfl whether it's with green bay or somebody else like adam said so um yeah not like overly concerned for, you know, the, the, the near future, but it is something to at least consider. Right. Um, you're exactly right, Adam. The, uh, the PFF numbers were kind of mid last year. So he did mm-hmm. have an 82 grade for tackling, but then 60 pass rush 52 in coverage. And then an overall grade of 60. So, okay. But that, and that down from year one, 52 overall, uh, in 2022. Okay. So, so not, up a little bit, but yeah, not, not a great. ton. Yeah, not great. Not what you want to see from sure. a guy you invest a first round pick. Yeah, in. first round pick in. That's 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 where I think he could maybe have a little longer leash than some of these other linebackers that we depend on an IDP because he was a first round pick. But, but also know. maybe not. You know, we've seen yeah. and Kith Murray found another job, but like Isaiah Simmons, like it didn't matter for him. Is it going to matter for Zayvon Collins? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably not. You know? I mean, I kind of see him like uh, Patrick Queen kind of career path where I think because of the capital. Yeah. And I think he's a, I think he's a fine player. I yeah, don't think I he's agree. a bust. I agree. Um, but yeah, if he does end up somewhere else, I think he could. Um, it just feels like the league has learned from their mistakes of, you know, overdraft. Cause it's, yes. you feel like there used to be like what, three or four well, off ball linebackers. Mm-hmm. Going and the first, yeah. There anymore. was a need there, you know, Devon J Campbell not being there anymore. Macri could speak to it a little bit better, but you know, there's a lot of teams that are pretty specifically one LB set type, type teams like Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll talk about later, but you know, for the majority of the time, I feel like green Bay pretty much rolls out two LBs and yeah. you know, there was a need for some depth there. Didn't um, Isaiah McDuffie go to Boston college. That could be helpful for Ooh, him. A little connection there. Is that uh, might be right? Look at that. And he's, I think uh, got one year left on his deal. Yeah. Is that yeah right? It's the end of this year. And uh, yeah, he did go to Boston college. He was there. Um, there you go. Eddie, look at you in the spreadsheet. Nice. Right, that's nice. Um, now McDuffie season, I think, well, it could be, you could be looking at Edron Cooper was the Devondre Campbell replacement and Hopper is potentially the McDuffie replacement. If McDuffie walks McDuffie in free agency was great next at the end year. Of last year, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the perfect scenario, right? Quay Walker gets his stuff together yeah. and it's him and Cooper just yeah. Yeah. eating ball with out Hopper as the McDuffie being freaks. And yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, um, Bobby brought it up just a second like ago. Do what? <laughs> like us. Like us. Yes. That's us freaks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so John getting choked up. Uh, that's, uh, that's how it goes on this, on this podcast, John. Um, so let's talk about something Bobby mentioned just a second ago, Pittsburgh Steelers. This is one that this is the only one we have like this. Uh, that is best slash worst question mark. Peyton Wilson, Pittsburgh Steelers. We had him as a best landing spot. Mm-hmm. You had him as a worse landing spot. Why are you not so thrilled about Mr. No ACLs uh, Wilson <laughs> landing in Pittsburgh? Yeah, not that I'm like, not that I hate the landing spot because I, I really like the player. I, I had Peyton Wilson as my LB2 pre draft. I had just kind of hoped for somewhere that isn't Pittsburgh, basically. Like, I. I have a problem with the Pittsburgh Steeler linebacker depl- deployment. I, I, it's why I didn't like Cole Holcomb when he signed there originally. And I know he got hurt last year, but 
when we saw him last year as a starter, that this is a very rotation heavy single linebacker team. Like they, when they have their guys healthy, which they didn't last year. So that kind of, you know, forced them to play more snaps for certain guys. But when their guys are healthy they they like to deploy a rotation in how they use them. And, uh, you know, especially outside of their LB one to put those guys, uh, out in certain situations, play to their strengths, right? So you, you look at Cole Holcomb last year when he was their LB1, 78% of snaps, 90% of snaps, 74% of snaps. He was up and down a lot. It was it started to solidify a little bit between like 80 and 90 before he got hurt, but it was it was still kind of a frustrating rotation, right? And for these man heavy defenses, I, I worry that, you know, every snap matters right and if you're not going to be playing in every down role which wilson might not be especially considering the injury stuff especially considering they signed patrick queen to to a relatively large deal um that's where i, I start to get uh, a, a little bit concerned for for somebody like peyton wilson even if he becomes like their lb2 there i don't know if he's going to be their lb1 just because of the money that they gave to Patrick Queen, but you know, if it depends on Holcomb's health too, right? If he's not healthy, then you know this could be a better situation. But they also still have a Landon Roberts there under contract too. I think they liked quite a bit from what he gave them last year, and and you know they kept kind of using him. Sometimes it was out of necessity, and other times not. But they, they they're keeping him around, it seems. So. I, I just worry, right? I talked about the, the man heavy defenses. Those are efficiency killers as far as tackling goes. And and then if you're not playing every down, that that starts to hurt your IDP value as well. So that was the reason I didn't like the landing spot for Wilson, but I still really like the player. And I could see a path there, basically, if he can get it. Yeah, there's definitely some competition, Addy, with um it's gonna be Patrick Queen that he is going to be. If yeah. it's just one linebacker that's getting, you know, 90 plus percent of snaps there, it's gonna be Queen. Um, but Queen, I think, is on a deal that they can get out of as soon as next year, right? They could save 10 million getting so, out of that deal next year. Yeah. And, so and, and I think the reason I would be maybe more optimistic is there is competition, but it's it's soft competition, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um older a, older guys. Yeah, older guys, injury, you know, guys like Cole Holcomb who have a bit of an injury history. Yeah, so coming off a bad one. Yeah. So very one of the worst ones. Yes. So I think there is a path for Peyton Wilson to get up to that number two seat. And then you're one injury away from potentially being the team's LB one as soon as this year. Um, and then, yeah, you look at the contract for queen this, you know, they can save 10 million bucks next year. It would not shock me to see uh, Patrick queen on his way out as soon as next year. I think they'll end up keeping him around one or two years, but yeah. we'll see what he looks like outside of the Baltimore ecosystem and without Roquan Smith as his wingman, because that wasn't the best looking situation prior to Roquan Smith arriving. I feel the exact same way. And the good thing now, though, is Peyton Wilson's not going to cost near as much. Yes, that is true. Probably going to be able to get Peyton Wilson like in the late fourth now, maybe. I was thinking maybe even, yeah, late fourth, early fifth. Exactly. So, so at that at that price, I'm absolutely going to be in because, yeah, I think it could be it could be a year before we get to see Peyton Wilson. But I do think we're going to get to see him at some point. Um, and if it does work out, boy, like imagine that, like this dude being like a stud middle linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, like that could be pretty special. We know that the dude like can be pretty prolific when he does get a chance as far as like putting up stats. So I think he's worth, I think he's worth the risk. And like I mentioned, like now he's cheap, but yeah, he, it could pay off. It could pay off very well for you. And I mean, the the move we've, we've touched on this as well, but get rid of him early. Like hopefully mm-hmm. he, he gets the opportunity out. year two goes bonkers and then get rid of him because guy doesn't have ACLs, <laughs> but he has just a, a ridiculous, you know, uh, injury list. So, like, what was it? Jason King was telling ten, us like surgery, ten surgeries. Ten some surgeries. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, get rid of the guy cash out when you can, but yeah, wait to I, capture I, that I'm, value. I'm good with it now. Yeah. yeah. He was going to be, you know, if he would have gotten, if he would have gotten second round capital, like late second round or even like early third round capital. Mm-hmm. If we're talking like if he was like right around where Colson was going, I think the tune would be a lot different on Peyton Wilson. He barely snuck into the top 100. He was picked 99 overall. Yeah. I believe he was LB4. Um, Edron Cooper, Junior Colson, Trevin Wallace. And then I th- think was Peyton Wilson next. Was there maybe someone in between? 
uh, Wallace and Did Lufa Did Did Lufa Lufa go before him? I think so. Uh, Linebacker off the board, I'm pretty sure. Who was? Yes, uh, Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson was the sixth guy off the board. Cooper, Colson, Trevin Wallace. Morris, Morris Leofow, right? Uh, yeah, T- Tyron Hopper, and then Peyton Wilson. Okay, so he was the sixth LB. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and we, it was kind of it was kind of one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, is uh, Peyton Wilson going to slide out of day two here and not even get top hundred draft capital? He barely squeaks in. Um, so yes, not great draft capital. Landing spot could be better, but like we said, or like Adam brought up, when you have these kind of muddy situations and not great draft capital, the price does go down. Mm -hmm. Um, So it could be a nice opportunity to buy low and then cash out if he does get his opportunity. So um, next up here though, John, I think this, when you sent me your list, this was the only guy that you had like very clearly. I actually love this landing spot and it is the aforementioned junior Colson landing with his old coach, Jim Harbaugh, Los Angeles chargers, uh, let's just glow. Let's just have a good, like a good, you know, five minutes of feeling great about junior <laughs> Colson, John, before we move on to some of the rest of these, what'd you like about Colson? Landing? Sure. Yeah, no, th- this was definitely like the one player for the one exact landing spot that I knew I-, I could definitely get excited about, right? Like going to back with reuniting with Jim Harbaugh in that chargers defense from Michigan, th- the competition there for snaps is, is Denzel Perriman, who I, I think is going to play um, Diane Henley, Nick Neiman, Troy Dye, like I, I definitely like Junior Colson's chances of getting on the field here in year one. I mean, he was the captain of of the best defense in the country last year. Um, he's an incredibly reliable player as well, like zero pet penalties this past season, consistently improved his missed tackle rate year over year. Um, yeah, as a as a even as a freshman, right? Like over 500 defensive snaps, he was able to deliver a, a really strong 8.2 missed tackle rate. Finished with 4.7 missed tackle rate in 2023, which is the second best in the entire FBS among linebackers with at least 500 snaps, which is a a high bar of playing time for for such a like a low missed tackle rate, which you like to see. My, my favorite word to describe him is clean. Like he just he just does everything so well and exactly how you'd want your starting middle linebacker to look even in coverage he's one of the best linebackers in this class like he didn't have an interception in college that really doesn't matter like he was top five in in this linebacker class in coverage grade completion rate allowed first down and touchdown rate allowed yards allowed um, per coverage target explosive play rate allowed like this is a guy that i think you know as much as we do this like every year right where we get excited about a guy we're like this is definitely going to be the guy that's going to get on the field year one and i swear to god if this doesn't work out i'm never doing it again because of all the players that should be able to do it in the right on the right team it, it's junior colson with the los angeles chargers john you know that's a lie you know that there will be another <laughs> linebacker even if junior colson burns us there will be another linebacker we'll all fall in love with next sure. year but no, Bobo, you actually had a uh, YouTube short that came out where you kind of referenced Dayon Henley. We we're a little bit worried, mm-hmm. you know, is he 2024's Brian Osamoa where he gets rug pulled? And you even mentioned, I think there's some smoke there with Junior Colson and, you know, easy to connect the dots there with Harbaugh. And I think for me, Bobo, that's the one difference with Colson versus maybe some of these other linebackers that we've seen. Yeah, he's not a first round pick like Jack Campbell, but he's literally reuniting with the coach that he just won a national championship with. Like John said, clean prospect, soft depth chart. The two incumbent starters both gone. So, I mean, I think Junior Colson at the very least has every opportunity in the world to become the LB one for the chargers in 2024. From an opportunity perspective, he might've been the biggest IDP winner in the draft um, because you're exactly right. Dayon Henley, Denzel Perryman, Troy Dye, whoever's there um, just names. And John's exactly right. Junior Colson is very vanilla, but who doesn't get some vanilla ice cream? And it's like, you know, this is pretty good. I was disappointed. There wasn't like whipped cream sprinkles, <laughs> I love some cherries. That's a very old man Bobby take you know, right there. But dang, just some, <laughs> I'm very pissed if some I have to eat some sir. Yeah. Plain old soft Eating serve, it with one of those like vanilla wooden ice cream out of like a paper cup. It's going to leave you happy. You know, but Macri kind of pointed out something that I wish that you could I wish there was a pre-draft process and there is with like the the interviews and the, you know, 
the 30 visits and everything that we don't see. Um, but Junior Colson is in the right place at the right time a lot of times. And um, how hard the NFL linebacking position is to coach for these rookies. I mean, we just got done talking about like how many of these rookies over the last four years um, at the linebacker position have just failed Mm -hmm. because they're not able to read what the offense is doing. They're in the wrong spot. Missed tackles come. Um, It's just a really difficult position. And when you've got a guy like Junior Colston, sure, his 40 time might be not super sexy. He might not have the craziest RAS and everything. Um, But if you can show that you can lead a defense, you're now going to the NFL with the coach that you just won the NCAA championship with. Um, The more and more I think about Junior Colston, the more it makes you think like, wow, this is the LB one out of this class. Like this makes so much sense. I think the question Addy is, is he the IDP one Oh one for this class? I don't think so. I mean, I guess it depends on your scoring. If you're in like some silly tackle heavy setup. Yeah. And your setup, of course, if you're, yeah, if you can, if you're only starting, right. If you're on MFL and you're only starting two defensive ends, um, and where you're, you have the ability to where you can start four linebackers, you know, then, yeah, I mean, I think that that's where it becomes kind of a consideration, but for the most part, I'm not in any leagues like that. Uh, so it's, it's going to be one of those edge rushers. I think it was, but he's like, he's in like the mix now for, he's in top four now, I yeah, guess. He's, it, it, I think for us, like we will always opt for edge rushers because yeah. they're better stores of value than linebacker, but just the general IDP public. I think junior Colson is now the IDP one Oh one. He was in this draft that I just, I'm doing right now. So, so I think it's whether it's tackle heavy, whether it's your league is set up to start more linebackers than edge rushers. He feels really safe. He feels it's sort of like a public perception type of thing, like coming off of the draft, uh, going to Los Angeles, reuniting with Harbaugh, that depth chart, and people just love linebackers. That's but just it. It's just have when have we had a? I guess Nicobe Dean. I, people were was he the LB one in that class? But he was also a third round yeah. pick. Yeah. It just feels a little weird calling a guy that was drafted in the third round your LB one. I know there are there are plenty of examples of of hits in the third round for linebackers, but mm-hmm. it just feels a little strange. It's like why this guy last so long in the draft because we were thinking maybe there's a chance he goes at like 36 or 37 or whatever it was to the chargers with their second round pick yeah um, but of course we saw all those wide receivers go john what are your thoughts there is is colson the idp 101 or is it still the edge rushers it's still the edge rushers for me as well like i, I just think for positional value replaceability in season edge rusher is a much more difficult and rare position to get a hit like or to keep those hits at they're more valuable basically where linebackers are more replaceable, but yeah, I, I'm with you, Adam. Like it, it, it's definitely weird. Like third round pick, right. But it's also becoming like a more devalued position as well in the NFL. Right. So these guys are kind of being pushed down the board where, you know, second, third round capital is, should be really the best we're going to get from the linebacker position. I mean, even Jack Campbell last year, like it was a, bit of a reach to get him in the first round you you know maybe end of the first round was was more reasonable but where detroit took him was pretty high but i'm with you you know just for this class specifically there was only one other linebacker who was taken ahead of him and yeah i it it's it's like nothing's guaranteed it's not a perfect you know position or anything like that but it does feel like the best case in this draft at least i guess it's not like too far Fetch because I mean he he was the second linebacker drafted. Yeah, it just whenever you're comparing them to those edge rushers, mm-hmm. guys that were drafted top twenty, it's like eh, yeah. yeah. I still would rather have these. Yeah, Col- yeah, oh, yeah. I agree. Colson to me feels like third round. Yeah, mid third, mid to late third. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but he's probably gonna that. go. But he's probably gonna go that. in the late early late second early third. If you watch college ball. Everybody's going to know who Junior Colson is. The whole story behind it, we're going to hear it a lot on television. Uh, Harbaugh gets his linebacker. I just think that, I think you're right. I think what you're talking about, you're no, no uh, position left behind. Mid-second, Colson's going to start becoming to be in play, which is crazy because I'm not taking a guy like Colson over a lot of these offensive players mm-hmm. or, the, or the edges, but, you know, to each his own. And yep. people are willing to take the risk. You know, we've talked a lot mm-hmm. lately about how the pool is just not as deep for linebackers That's these right. days. Yeah. There's just not a lot of them out there getting 
production week in and week Positional out. Positional scarcity. I mean, we can sit yeah. here and talk about, you know, kind of, re- you know, value over replacement when it comes to edge rushers versus linebacker, but linebacker the pool is so scarce so if you have a mm-hmm. chance to hit on like a three down green dot yeah that is worth the shot i think that's that would be the case that i would put forward i would still take the edge rushers because of yeah. the longevity because yeah. of the upside but i could i could see right. people making the case and, and jim harbaugh has a pretty great track record for linebackers that he does in the NFL. That's true that he does so and he just got his guy yeah, yeah I, I told you guys he was not gonna like henley he oh, yeah. is a, yeah. a goofball. Yeah. <laughs> he was not going to be a fan of him. Yeah, he uh, he wants to get Henley in some khakis and a you know yeah. freshly pressed button down shirt, and Henley's not having any of Although, it. Although, did I see him singing on the broadcast he he today? Did. Did I, yeah. I, I, I had it like minimized while I was working on stuff, but that was the broadcast on day three is insane chaos. Yeah. It is. To- Speaking of which, want to give a brief shout out here. Uh, Eric Harms just dropped this in our Slack. I totally missed this. But Tobias Stark, Mike's in motion, international fan of the year, announced the pick for the Buccaneers. Wow. So shout out, Toby. I know he listens to the pod. Congratulations, nice. man. International fan of the year. Got to announce the Buccaneers Dang. draft pick. So Love Love let's it. go. Really cool. Really cool. So thank you, Eric, for sharing that. And congrats, Toby, for what an honor. I feel like I would have. That's awesome. I would totally lock up. You have it on the card. You just read it. But I feel like I'd be totally just spaced out. Which pick did he read? Um, it was the, uh, oh, 220th pick. So it was a six round pick for Tampa Bay. It was Elijah Klein. Well, at least it was an easier name, right? Right. Like, yeah. It would be hard. so much harder if it was. <laughs> Rook Aurora. Yeah. It was Rook Aurora. Rook Aurora. Aurora, Aurora or uh, Edifuan. Edifuan. <laughs> yeah. Udofoshio. A lot of names in this draft. Yeah. That Tobias is German too, right? Yes, so. he is. So that would be very hard. That would be very hard. So <laughs> let's move to the next one though, John. And this is another one I think we can debate. We have it down as a worst sure. landing spot just because of the competition ahead of him. But it's Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton landing oh. with the Washington Commanders. Uh, uh, you have Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne there. What do you think about uh, Johnny Newton? Arguably the IDL one or two in this class, Sean, landing on uh, the Washington Commanders. Yeah, not not a great landing spot, right? When you got guys like Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen in the middle there, like, and that's the the position that this guy plays. I it definitely feels like you know they're they're loaded up there in the middle now like they have a next man up like right away that can play like jerzon newton or johnny newton however he's going by like one of the better interior defenders in this class if you know arguably the best i think byron murphy is is probably the top guy but newton was excellent last year at uh, at illinois and i mean i just don't know that he's going to get enough playing time there for idp relevance at least for a while until there's a potential out in in deron Payne's contract or or jonathan allen's um a pain i think what he signed a four-year deal last off season something like yeah. that an extension right so so deron Payne essentially is going to be there through 2025 they have a potential yeah. out after 2025 and then jonathan allen's contract is um going to be pretty tough to ever get out of. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. not a UFA till 2026. Yeah, so. potential out for pain 2026. They can get out of um, Allen's yeah. contract right now. They can save they can save a, a good amount of, of money, especially next year. Next year they could save almost 17 million getting out of Jonathan so maybe Allen's it's contract. Maybe Pain and Johnny Newton. I think oh. so cuz also I think back to Jonathan Allen on the bench last year pissed. <laughs> I mean, no, it's a different situation there now, but he may be I, I ready to some, go somewhere where he can tend. He's yeah. a, he's almost thirty. He's a, a great player. It's also, yes. like everybody knew. And that's everybody I, knew. I, I did see some commentary. They did bring in Newton. Yeah, new owner, new GM, new coach, new quarterback. I mean, the to- the whole kind of totem pole has switched out for this organization. And I did see some commentary on Twitter that was kind of interesting. I think it might've been for like Brett Coleman or somebody like that. Like it was funny how much the Washington commanders were not just like sort of shoving these picks from the previous res- regime aside. They were dunking on the picks that I think was the phrasing they used. So kind of interesting to me how forcefully they were going after like, no, these picks y'all made sucked. We are going to make our own picks at these same positions and replace the guys that you drafted. That's kind of what I see. And also like Newton is recovering from uh, some Jones fracture. I believe it? so. So I mean, it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. You know, they, they're going to have an out and, in uh, Allen's contract next year. Um, 
maybe they move on from this off season. If, if things don't go well, you know, he, he could be unhappy with that pick. So you never know how things go, but I, I feel like Newton's going to be fine. I, I think 2025, like there's a chance mm-hmm. that he could be getting 600, 700 snaps. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's proven to be productive. The pressure rate and stuff was fine in college. Uh, pass rush win rate, I think it was like 15.4. His, his final year at Illinois. So, I mean, that's pretty good stuff for defensive tackle. I mean, he was, he was my DT one mm-hmm. uh, pre-draft, but uh, you know, with the, with the draft capital and stuff, it's, it's kind of hard not to go Byron Murphy now, I think. Yeah, John, that's a kind of an interesting question. New coach, new head coaches that were defensive coordinators last year, Mike McDonald in Seattle uh, gets his shot there as head coach. You got Dan Quinn now in charge of the Washington Commanders. Who do you like more for 2024, let's say? And then who do you like better for Dynasty, Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy the second? Yes, I, it's probably Byron Murphy for both for me, but it's not like, you know, it's 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 a, you know, a huge gap or anything like that. I, I'm, I'm with Adam. I think Newton, there's a good argument for him to be the top interior defensive player in this class and look I, I mean obviously the situation isn't ideal right now but like you guys laid out like there's definitely a path for down the road it's it's still it's just a weird like you said like dunking on the the previous regime's picks it's like two of the best players from that the, that regime were Deron Payne and, and Jonathan Allen so why those guys among you know everybody else right but hey that's you know you're, you're coming in you're cleaning up you're you're starting new. I, I get it I just uh yeah, I, I hope there's I hope there's a path for him. I, I like all three of those guys in the middle, but it does feel like Newton will be the, the third string for now. Yeah, I think it could be a lot of these situations will look so much different a year or two from now. Yeah. Okay. But in terms of just like immediate impact, I think is a lot of what we're talking about tonight. Um, and you do have to see some things clear up in some of these situations for, you know, guys to get opportunities. So I think Johnny Newton's time will come. When will that time be? We'll see. Let's move on to another best landing spot, though, John. And this is one I'm low-key excited about just because the Falcons have historically not had a good edge rusher in many, many years. They had an opportunity mm-hmm. to sit at eight and take Dallas Turner, Leatu Latu, Jared Verse. Decided to go with Michael Penix for question mark reasons. Um <laughs> Still the head scratcher of the draft there. So they do not go edge rusher early, but they do go with Braylon Trice and the third round, the 74th overall pick. What were your thoughts on Braylon Trice landing with the Atlanta Falcons? I I really like Braylon Trice as a player, as a prospect coming out. I think he's, he's a fun player, like very physical, big edge rusher that, could do a lot, like a lot more for his size than I think, you know, he, he gets credit for and falling to the third round. You know, I, I thought maybe he'd push for, for, for the second round, but I, I like him here in the third and I like the landing spot in Atlanta. I mean, the competition there, Lorenzo Carter, um, Arnold Debichetti, who I haven't given up on yet. I, I think Arnold Debichetti had a fine second season. Um, Zach Harrison played a fair bit last year, wasn't really effective. So I think there's definitely a path to snaps for, for a third round pick like Braylon Trice. Um, he, he coming out of this class, like 94th percentile in career pass rush grade among prospects since 2016, really strong number there coming off back to back years with 90 plus pass rush grades. Um, he's 90th percentile in career win rate, 87th percentile in career pressure rate, 80th percentile in quick pressure rate, which I, I always like to bring up because his size is 6'4, 274 pounds. And he plays so physical too off the snap that I think it's a, it's a really nice number for him. That quick pressure rate is essentially essentially pressures in two and a half seconds or less. Right. So, um, yeah, I really like him. I, I like the potential there in Atlanta and they keep doing it. I mean, it's, they, it, they just load up on day two picks as opposed to just spending a first round pick on a high end guy. But, um, I, I like Braylon Trice as a prospect. I, I think there's a, a nice potential here for IDP. Yeah. I mean, is this 2024's, uh, Byron Young? We saw Raheem Morris, now the coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Mm -hmm. work magic with uh, not stellar defensive line group outside of Aaron Donald. And now you get a third round pick in Braylon Trice, who, you know, has some nice attributes there as John laid out. Um, Addie, I think you could do worse than Braylon Trice. Uh, I don't know if he gets, I don't, does he go on rookie drafts? 
Probably nah, not. I doubt it. Um, maybe, maybe like, like a the end fifth, of the fifth. fifth round dart throw. <laughs> if you're in sixth and seventh rounds, yeah, probably. But um, I mean, yeah, like John could laid land out. in a worse spot for competition. I mean, it is nobody's ahead of him on the depth chart. Yeah, I mean, it's Arnold Abiquetti, uh, and then Zach Harrison, who was actually pretty solid last year when, yeah, as a rookie. But yeah, I mean, nothing that's going to scare you too much. But I don't know, man. He's a third round pick. Mm-hmm. We've, they just did this the last two years <laughs> trying to. Yeah, you know, doing sure. it. Yeah, <laughs> they keep doing it. They can't keep but getting you know, away with it. But like, they do. like John said, like <laughs> you guys had the 108. You could have taken one of these premier pass rushers and stopped <sighs> doing this. Hey, anytime you could take a quarterback with bum knees who may yeah. start for you at age 34, you got to do it. I mean, really, they're they're in a position like with Brian Kirk and like you could have taken someone that's ready to go right now, like Lotu, like you could and and try and compete next year. Mm-hmm. Just a head scratcher move there at, at 108 for Atlanta. I want to throw a couple little bonus names in here from our doc, John, because uh, I was thinking, is is this possibly 2024's Yaya Diaby? Uh, that might actually be the guy who landed in Tampa Bay, uh, the 57th overall pick, second round choice of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Chris Braswell. And then, Babo, your Rammies went with one of the athletic freak shows from the combine uh, Braden Fisk with the 39th overall pick. So that was a little bit surprising to me uh, to see those guys who, you know, we were like a little bit kind of lukewarm on uh, coming into this process, get such good draft uh, draft capital, especially Fisk landing with your Rammies at 39th overall. It's pretty good. Yeah. That really elevated the defensive line there for the Rams. I mean, Dear God, what what they did in adding Braden Fisk and um, Jared Verse in the in the first it's round, pretty nice. You know something that I heard Power. from uh, yep. Jordan Rodriguez today was that when they watched a lot of Fisk tape and when they watched a lot of Verse tape, they kept seeing how violent these two guys were together and how well they played together. Um, and just the thought of pairing those two guys up um, in LA, teammates in college which is not something that they could get past. So it's going to be really fun, man. I, and and this is really, this is really far fetched of me. And this is probably me getting a little bit head over heels, but gosh, man, the defensive line for the Rams could be really Looking good okay. in 2024. Looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to act like Braden Fisk is going to be Aaron Donald, but you know, a lot of smarter people than I um, basically have said, you know, Fisk is not going to replace this, you know, world beater, generational defensive tackle, but he's going to disrupt a lot of plays in 2024. Maybe not quite to the extent that Aaron Donald did, because again, you know, generational talent. But man, I uh, I know it's always fun with the draft to get hype on your teams and look up these guys and you know get you Kinchins and you know Jared Verse, <laughs> the first Jared pick since. 2016. They just the get, other Jared. They get into these Jareds in the first round, but uh, I don't know. All that to say, I'm pretty hyped for the uh, for the Rams uh, draft pick so far this year. Yeah. Howdy, what'd you think about those two landing spots? Yeah, I mean, I love the Fisk pick. I mean, he was also a really good tackler for yeah. defensive tackle. 7.1 percent career tackle rate. That was, I mean, among the best in the in the class. Uh, Byron Murphy had 6.5. Newton was 4.9. Uh, Devondre Sweat was 7.1. But yeah, I mean, so he's he's right through the top. And then you mentioned the freak athlete, 9.89 RAS. Mm. But yeah, just that tidbit with them both playing at Florida State, you know, getting them to continue to play together in the NFL. And it's a fun team. Like yeah. it's, it's a fun locker room. That's just, uh, I like what they're doing there in LA. And that does, I mean, it feels like that's going to be, we're going to look up, you know, eight weeks in and like everyone's talking about this Braden Fist yeah. guy. Yep. And Jared it's- Verse and this houses defense doing what they're doing with Aaron Donald gone. You know what I mean? So I like it. I think that uh, they've done, they've done a really good job to start. There's no replacing Donald, but they, we should have seen this coming a little bit because it's like, this is the team that tried to trade for Brian Burns. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they go grab Jared verse. This is the team that just lost Aaron Donald. So yeah, they're going to spend a top 40 pick on an interior defensive lineman. And that's quite opposite what they normally do. Obviously they trade all their first round picks, but well, Peter Schrager swears up and down. They're going offense. They're going to trade up for Brock Bowers and all this. And I mean, like Kobe Turner and Byron Young were both like third round at least. Yeah. Was one of Byron Young a second? He was a third. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I think you pretty, you're exactly right, Josh. You basically see like, we really got to address the whole line. We're not just going to be able to add a lot to and, uh, and change this whole situation here. So, um, I said that wrong. We added Jared verse. I keep forgetting verse. I'm, I'm thinking Fisk here. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Would you have rather added Brian Burns and traded that pick away? No, I Are think you they cool went about the it the situation? right way. Because we I talked about it a month or so right ago. I would not want to pay Brian Burns 150 million. Yeah, that's personally. a lot. Of, that's yeah. a lot of guap. A lot of money for someone of still kind of not super proven yet. Right. I mean, not he's that never really tier. from. And I know John knows this, but like from a PFF standpoint, never yeah. been like a big pressure boy. Yeah. Never had like the the most elite pressure rate. So yeah, I mean that's that was a. I, I love Brian Burns, but. I don't love them that much. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have verse and Braden Fisk. Uh, yeah. John, what did you think about uh, both Fisk landing in LA and then Chris Braswell, uh, Alabama landing with Tampa Bay, uh, their opposite, assumedly Yaya Diaby. Yeah. I really like the, I really like the Fisk um, pick like you guys laid out there. I, I love Kobe Turner as well. So that's kind of a nice pairing there. Obviously nothing replaces Aaron Donald. Like we, like we keep saying, but it's a really nice pickup or there. Does he? Um, yeah, maybe you never know. Um, <laughs> but I wish they would have added a second linebacker. Maybe they add somebody like late in the, in the off season. No, no, no. We don't need that. John. We're good. Just the second one, you know, just Talk somebody about to- Braswell. <laughs> <laughs> So Braswell, uh, going to Tampa Bay, I, I like Braswell. I don't think he's a bad pass rusher. I think he's actually pretty good. I, I think he's probably more of a designated pass rusher to start, right? And that doesn't necessarily have that um, run defense floor where he can potentially get some more tackles for us. I, I think in the NFL, like really poor run defense grades coming out of college, um, 68.1 for his career. That's 20th percentile, um, even his best career run defense grade was a 67.2 that's seventh percentile among prospects since 2016 so really poor numbers as a run defender but all of his pass rush metrics are are pretty solid and and um i I think there's definitely potential for him to be one of those kind of big play upside guys but lower floor yeah well let's keep it rolling i just wanted to toss those two guys in there because we have them in our doc and they got better draft capital than I remembered in the moment. So let's move, though, to a worse landing spot. We talked about him a little bit earlier. I think he was the third or fourth linebacker off the board. To the Dallas Cowboys, Maris Leafau, or Puafau, as you called him in our Slack, John. Uh, what has you so enraged, upset, uh, distraught over the landing spot for Mr. Leafau? Yeah, I, I just don't like him as a player. I, I think the pick for don't where like the him he as was a taken, person. Don't like don't him, like him as a person either. Yeah, I think bad heart. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Strike two, John. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's a good. I'm sure he's a good person. I. I uh, good but John, no, this is backtracking. His Canadian <laughs> instincts <laughs> kick in. with your chest, John. I can't help it. Can't help it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th- like I think this is actually the landing spot that I settled on with Kyle when we did the linebacker episode. Um, more because I think he needs to be in a rotational spot and likely won't emerge as anything more than that like you got Eric Kendricks there you got Damon Clark you got Marquise Bell as well DeMarvian Overshone who they spent a third on last year if he's healthy but like I just don't like Lua Fowl at all I think he's gone he's gonna have to go through a, a dramatic transformation to be relevant as an IDP or at least an effective one if he does get playing time like for me he, he was the most tentative tackler in this class he, he's incredibly frustrating to watch it's almost like he's waiting for the ball carrier to run into him before he tries to wrap up is how I, I said it with Kyle. Like he already had a really bad 18.4% missed tackle rate. And honestly, I, I, I think it could be worse than that if he actually attempted tackles at a, at a higher rate, but he doesn't like he's, he's fine at getting into position. He just doesn't have any aggression to his game. He had the worst first contact rate in this class at 6.2% for his career. He had the worst run stop rate in this class at 4.7% for his career. And then obviously that leads to like a really poor 7.8% tackle efficiency, obviously because of all that, which is also the worst in this class, but yeah, Lufau, He's he's not a wartime consigliere. He doesn't have what it takes to be an IDP on my roster. I don't think so. I'm I'm out on him, despite where him being drafted inside the top five linebackers in this class. Yeah, and he sounds like Leo Fowl may be scared to compete. Sounds like it, but that's <laughs> that's awful stuff right there. Yeah, that was um, seven point eight percent tackle rate. I mean, that is a joke. That is like brutal. a that's like cornerback numbers. Yeah, yeah, truly. And then a, what was it? Eighteen point six percent missed tackle rate, John. Yeah, 18.4% missed tackle wow. rate. Wow. That's got to be yeah. one of the highest in the class. And you look at his production too, man. Wow. I mean, across 
Looks like 33 games. The guy put up just 117 tackles. I feel like you could do that. I think I could. I think I did do that. I think you did. <laughs> At least I did that. At least. <laughs> did it appear? <laughs> every, night, every night. Every <laughs> night. Locked in right now. Best player of all time. That's every right. night. Living legend in your own mind. <laughs> your That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's why was this guy the yeah, it's the Cowboys? What are we, what are we yeah, doing? What are we Dallas? doing here? It's a yeah, weird I don't know. One. I don't know. He was I didn't see him on any top ten list, no. I don't think, right? Cowboy fans gotta be pissed. They did not. Yeah. I feel like this was because there was some solid. There was them. some better people on the board. I mean, Peyton Wilson. Like yeah, if they would have right. got a Peyton Wilson, like that would have been exciting. Like yeah, that would have been man. fun. I would have been much more excited about Peyton Wilson in Dallas than Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, Maris Leofow. That's a what's a head scratcher. Mm-hmm. Never so, know. Maybe maybe he emerges and and you nah, know proves me wrong. Nah, but I, I don't nah. feel good about it. John, just own it, baby. <laughs> just hate it. Just let the hate flow through you. Be a Sith. All, All right, right Addy, I wish I could give you the solo cam, but we only have one camera for I'll tonight. I'll move it for us, Josh. Yeah, John, uh, Bobby, please don't ever touch the camera. <laughs> it's against the rules. But this is your boy. He got good landing spot here. Cole Bishop, Buffalo Bills, uh, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, both gone. Uh, it's Taylor Rapp and the Cole Bishop show. Potentially, Addy, what you think about uh, Bishop landing with the Bills? I love it, man. I mean, that's that's a primo spot. Uh, Cole Bishop was my safety one pre-draft, and I don't think much is going to change here. Uh, one of the youngest safeties, 21 and a half. Absolute freak. 9.88 RAS. Also somewhat thick and, and a little taller than I realized. 6'2", 206, um, 4'4", 5'40". 39 inch vert, 10 4 on the broad. So a really nice athlete. And then one of the more productive safeties, 10.9% career tackle rate. Um, you compare that to like Tyler Newbin at 8.4, Javon Bullard at 8.7. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he's he's got everything you want in safety. Also, the usage is really good. Mm-hmm. I think he paid, played like 73% of his snaps um, in the line, in the box, or, or in the slot. So Hopefully that translates. And I mean, I, I, I don't know that scheme wise Buffalo's the best, but I'm not going to be scared off by that stuff with a player like Cole Bishop. That stuff can always change too. You never know how that stuff goes, but I think I'm going to bet on the talent and leadership. I, I think he's going to be a great fit there. John, I feel like he checks a lot of boxes. This is one of the players that we had consensus best landing spots on. Why are you excited for Cole Bishop and Buffalo? Yeah, I'm with Adam. I, I love him coming into the draft as well. And and I, I think the landing spot does help him. Maybe, you know, we'll see what it does this year, but I, I definitely like it long term. Um, he was somebody that I didn't talk about in the like as our safety preview one that we did, but I did talk about him with Mike and said that like I gotta have this guy inside my my top three safeties for sure. And part of that, I, I just loved how he played around the line of scrimmage. Like Adam said, I think nearly half of all of his defensive snaps were either in the box or on the defensive line. And like he's not like a, a thick safety by any means or anything like that, but he's just really effective at playing in that that role closer to the line of scrimmage and rotating down and and being productive in that role as well. So um second best first contact great in this class for the safeties at 8.8 percent um 6.6 percent run stop rate as well second best in the class like didn't have like an amazing coverage grade or anything but you watch him and i think he's got the you know he's got good speed and range he could cover ground quickly i i really liked him um quite a bit and i think with buffalo you know i know they got taylor rapp mike edwards um damar hamlin um but I, I I think there's definitely a path there. I I think that system could work well for him. Uh, you know, Taylor Rapp probably going to be the guy that rotates down a little bit more. But I think with Buffalo, they've always done it where both guys, you know, there's an opportunity for both guys. It wasn't so much with Micah Hyde, but with like Rapp and Poyer um, last year, they both got opportunities. So I think there's going to be work there for for Cole Bishop to, to be productive um, for IDP as well. I, I like him quite a bit. Babo, safety one. Get you Newbin. Get you Kinchins or get you Bishop? Probably Bishop. I, I think, think Bishop so could fill in that Jordan Poyer role, honestly. Mm-hmm. And Jordan Poyer has slipped over the last couple of years, but man, peak Jordan Poyer there for Buffalo was Pretty like good. a top five safety. Pretty um, good. And honestly, those two linebackers there, you know, Milano, we'll see what he looks like when he comes back. But um, Bernard and Overshone, 
over Williams, Dorian. And Dallas. Yeah, Dorian uh, Williams. Sorry, Dorian. Yeah, those up. Uh, Dorian. Nicholas yeah. Morrow now too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It could be. You could see a little production from Bishop in uh, in twenty twenty four. I would say it's close with Newbin because I like the landing spot yeah, for Newbin. I do too. But the athleticism, uh, which is not everything for a safety, um, but yeah, it's it's. I think you could make a case for each of those guys. Um, you said Cole Bishop still your safety one, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Kitchens. And Newbin is certainly lacking the athleticism. 3.72 RES. I was going to say, maybe one of the worst yeah, RES scores. Yeah. Crazy. I have no idea. Was his, like, did he break a, break a toe or something before he had to run the 40? I mean, what's going on here with this guy? John, your safety one now in this class. Is it Newbin, Kitchens, Bishop? Where, where's your head at right now with that? Yeah, it was Hicks pre draft. I, I think with him falling, uh, that that changes. I, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Cole Bishop as a safety one. I'm still working on my IDP ranks and keep tinkering, but I, I'm probably going to have him as safety one. Javon Bullard also probably yeah. deserves the conversation. He one. was the second one off the board in this, yeah. uh, in this draft, drafted at 26 uh, in the second round. Mm-hmm. And it depends on how you look at Cooper DeGene as well. It sounds like he's going to be playing cornerback. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a fun DB group because it's not. Yeah, that's a fun discussion. Who's the who's DB one? Would you put DeGene over Cole Bishop? It's tough because you have a pretty established CB group there in Philadelphia. And then you also have uh, Quinion Mitchell, who they brought in in the first round. Mm-hmm. So, um, boy, but isn't I don't that know. good, though. I mean, you got Quinion Mitchell, a guy that could potentially be a lockdown. Yeah. So where, so where does if where Cooper does Gene slot? Is that a Brian Branch type of role? If he plays, if he plays slot, is that like Gremlin? Wheels up, dude. Like Sigmund Blue mentioned, yeah, kind of the Gremlin yeah. chaos creator. That's the thing. I don't. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna play all over the place. I mean, I think that's the type of player he is. I don't, I'm not really thinking he's a, gonna stick to the outside. Then they bring back Chauncey Gardner Johnson as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then you got Sydney Brown there. Sydney Brown's there. Blankenship's, Blankenship's there. Avante Maddox also got brought back as well, Avante right? Avante Maddox is there. He does. He James plays a slot. So they have a lot of these pieces that are that are the same, but I feel like DeGene's going to find his way into at least the top three. Maybe not next year, though, honestly. It's tough. I think DeGene is the guy I want to say. It's like what my heart would say, yeah. but. Um, Maybe Boy, we see it's maybe we see all these vets get released or something too though. Could be like Darius Slade, James Bradbury. Maybe maybe something's coming with one of those guys because yeah, right now it is very crowded. Mm-hmm. But I do, I mean, I am going to be willing to bet on DeGene's upside, and especially if you're in a, a league that rewards return yards. I mean, if I nothing got. else, I've enjoyed all the memes and videos. Oh my god, on Twitter with Hilarious. Cooper DeGene, it is an all timer so right now with the. Uh, with the with the comment I love circulating, our, it, the white person that said it's our Jackie Robinson. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are doing great. Uh, finally, having an athletic white DB in the NFL, it's, it's a cool. it's a good time to be alive. So yes, Cole Bishop, big time winner, nice landing spot. John, I'm curious your thoughts on this next one. We had Jonah Ellis as a worst landing spot. Uh, pretty good draft capital for Ellis. I think we like Ellis as a player. And prior to uh, maybe a few hours ago, this landing spot was a little bit nicer for Ellis because you had Baron Browning, Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper, but then they go and trade, I think a 2025 or 2026 pick to get John Franklin Myers from the New York jets. So with that edge room or that defensive line room, I guess I should say now in place, you also have Zach Allen. There is kind of a uh, mainly like an interior guy, but like the most underrated players in the league. Who's that? Zach Allen, Zach Allen. Yes, absolutely. So, just a crowded defensive line group. What were your thoughts on Jonah Ellis landing in Denver? Yeah, Jonah Ellis. I, I'm not crazy about him as a player. I, I think there's there's definitely things to like about him. I, you know, I, I think it's it's hard, right? Like Denver, I just it's hard to get excited about that group because there's so many of them and, and they're all going to get some playing time. And I think they're going to rotate just because nobody is good enough to quite command like an actual full-time workload. So I think rotating these guys is probably the best route they can go. It's a lot of cooks there in the kitchen and, you know, maybe not like master chef level cooks, more like master chef junior or something like that. But yeah. it, it, like Jonah Ellis. Yeah. I think he's fine. I, I don't, I have a hard time getting excited about him because I wasn't overly excited about him pre-draft. Like I could pull up some of his numbers. I mean, 49th percentile career pass rush grade, 
31, uh, 31st percentile career win rate, 37th percentile career pressure rate, 32nd percentile career run defense grade. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of a, just kind of a guy for me at that. We'll see again. No, I, I don't like saying that these guys are are not great or anything because they could definitely emerge and, and be good. They're not done developing yet. So, but Joan Alice is one that is probably going to be somebody I don't end up with a lot of. It's just kind of a swamp he landed in, man. It's just like yeah. a lot of like just mid tier kind of guys. And like John said, there's just not anyone there that emerges for me. So yeah, maybe Jonah Ellis could be that guy, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's messy right now, man. I don't mind Jonah Ellis. He's one of the more younger prospects in this class. I think he's 21.1. So, I mean, that's, that's younger than uh, Dallas Turner. But uh, he's got some things that I'm willing to bet on. You know, I mean, the the three cone, like you got you to start there. Six, six, nine, three cone. That's 100th percentile three cone. That is pretty nice. good. Pretty, pretty good. solid right there. Uh, we know about the, all of his brothers. He's got 10 brothers. Five of them are in the NFL. You know? are, are they his brothers, Christian Ellis and Caden Ellis? Yeah, that's yes, his brothers. That's the oh, brother sure. Ellis bro. <laughs> that's yeah. the double S bros. Oh, wow. He's, he's got another brother that's uh, coming up that was a three-star recruit that just signed at Utah. Wow. So imagine growing up in that family. Uh, yeah. Like, like Thanksgiving, uh, Chris, or Thanksgiving football games. Brutal. A lot yeah. of pressure. A lot of pressure. God, to, you'd have to have three jobs to support that. Those boys yeah, yeah, man. with, with uh, groceries. Just groceries. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> or you just kill a cow. Like, yeah. yeah you have to live on a ranch and just cook <laughs> your own, kill your own food, eat what you kill. So, but I, I'm, I'm okay with him. I, I, I like, you know, I like Denver. I, I, mm-hmm. I like Zach Allen. Uh, I'm envisioning, uh, could you imagine Zach Allen? Um, Jonah Ellis and Drew Sanders. <laughs> oh, Something you know, about speaking that of the wine. whites, just what is going it about at it. Exciting whites. <laughs> yes, yes, that's sir. exciting whites wine aisle right there that Adam's shot. Pretty cool. In. Pretty cool. I like what they're doing there. Yeah. I like what they're doing there. A lot of uh, hands on your heart saying the Pledge of Allegiance <laughs> yes, every day sir. at noon uh, after practice. They need to get Bo Richter in there. I'll they say they do that. need to get <laughs> your boy. <laughs> they need to get Bo Richter they in there. They need to right get now. Bo Constrictor in there right now to lead them in the Pledge of Allegiance. A lot of good Utah Jazz of the yes. Uh, a lot of good boys in that yeah. group. Uh, I, Zach Allen is probably the guy I want from that group. Um, it, Cause it's kind of a group where it's like, take your shot. Are you a Benito guy? Are you a Baron Browning guy? Are you a John Brinkley Myers guy? Um, They're time running out though. Yeah. Browning's I mean, Baron, Brown, fun, Baron Browning but, yeah. is getting, he's getting like the, his contract coming to an end. I think pretty soon. Isn't time running out for all of us though? Well, of course, but I feel like he's in the <laughs> final year of his deal. Right. I think this will be year four for him. And then Benito, this will be year three. So I think you're right. They're planning for, you know, yeah. yeah. Future ish. Yes. We'll see. Uh, next up here, speaking of get your kitchens, Baba, we'll start with you on this one. Yeah. Your Rammies go with Cameron Kitchens. Uh, I believe, am I correct in remembering that the uh, RES was not the best for Cameron yeah, Kitchens? Like yeah. 2.4. 2. 2. 2. 2.42 yeah. for Mr. Kitchens. Sure. But lands with the Rammies there. Uh, he was their uh, third round pick, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, so, what do you think about your boys picking up a safety? You got Cam Curl. They got the Cam, the Cameron Bros. Now, I guess at safety with wow. Cameron Curl and Cameron Kitchens. Sure. That's pretty weird. Sure. Uh, what are your thoughts there, Bobo? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear to me that Kitchens is going to play like free safety. Uh, five INTs in his career there with Miami. It's okay. I mean, I'm not in love with it at all. I don't really, I feel like there was probably maybe some better picks that you could have had there. I'm not sure had um, Hicks hasn't, hadn't gone yet. Uh, Solomon hadn't gone yet either. So I don't know. It feels very mid to me. Does he have a cool name? Yes. Um, do I trust him? Does he have a cool name? Do I trust him in the <laughs> His secondary? name is fine. It kind of sounds like a kid mispronouncing pretty kitchens. pretty cool, man. Get oh, you pretty can't. cool. Get you can't. Sounds Maybe like that's a country. It's like me. where you eat supper is the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on in the kitchen. Get you in. Get, come on. We're going to have like, supper. It's like, you know, take a, take a pull of, of dip. It's get you a pinch. Yeah, it's get, get you a kinch. <laughs> get you a kinch. Okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm back get in. Get you a kinch. Get you a noob. Get you a noob. Get you a noob. All right. Hey, John, I'm back in now that we're getting us, <laughs> getting us a kinch. You what like you think kinchins there? or not? I'd like, I probably like them a little bit more for, for NFL than, than IDP, yeah. but I do like the landing spot, at least for, you know, for getting on the field and, and playing like it's, I think Russ East and Quinton Lake are, are the other safety hey, options hey, over hey, there. Right. So, love okay. Quentin Lake. Love you like Quentin Lake. Players okay, named enough. after things. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeast yeah. and Lake. Yeast and Lake, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I name mean, talk in this uh, this segment here. <laughs> yeah, been too I long. Mean, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I think uh, Cameron Curl is obviously going to be the safety you want there for the Rams. But I mean, those deeper leagues that like, you're looking for a guy that's going to get on the field. I, I think Kinchins is is perfectly fine. I, I did have concerns about him, you know, like just dropping an overall play from from 2022 to 2023 at a 90 overall grade 90.7 coverage grade in 2022 but then 67.8 overall 65.1 coverage in 2023 not sure what happened there glosser glosser loved um, cameron kinchins he's a he's a university of miami guy and he was one of his top three safeties and um uh i know he liked this landing spot as well but uh, yeah i i think more probably for for nfl than idp for me Macri, yeah. uh, Cam Curl have a better 24 than he did 23 points Ooh, per game. I liked his 2023. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely possible. I think it's definitely possible. I, I would, I'd put it close. Well, what did he, what did he finish? He was just outside top 12 or was he inside top 12 for, for safeties yeah. uh, in 2023? Yeah. What was I think it? he was like outside the top 20, just outside. Yeah. Outside top 24 safeties. Maybe he was in there for total finish. He got uh, 11.4 points per game in 23. Anyone solid? Let's, uh, yeah. let's, do you know the, do, can you pull up the uh, finish to see where Mr. Curl was? Sure. I want to clarify, he was the 99th pick overall. I had said earlier that was Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson was 98 overall. So both these guys just up. snuck into yeah, the... Yeah, Kinchin was, yeah, almost a fourth, wasn't he? Mm-hmm, he was. And they had to get Luke McCaffrey in there, Christian's brother, mm-hmm. at the 100th <laughs> overall pick. So, of course, the third round is a little weird just because that's when the compensatory picks start coming in. Um, so you go from 32 picks to 37 picks in the third round. So that's how we're able to get a hundred picks. So I'm trying to vamp for yeah, Adam. To but no, I finish. <laughs> where did, uh, where did Cameron curl finish last year, Addy? Well, I've got it by DB. So he okay. was DB 36. Okay. But 11.4 points per game. I can tell you what that is on a points per game basis. Let's see. Points per game wise, 11.6 points per game is good for DB 39. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, and I, I really like his potential to be like the second linebacker there for the Rams, um, Cameron yeah. Curl, because they don't really have like a, a guy. Like, I think he could come in and do that the way he did for Washington uh, quite a bit as well. So, definitely, um, I guess I would say then better this year than last year. He'll be overdrafted. He'll be oh, yeah. I mean, most top, DBs top 15 are, DB, yeah. but him especially. People love them some Cameron Curl. I think it's the dreads. I think Maybe. it's the dreads. <laughs> I mean, you know, can we blame them? We have fallen for dreads before, sure. guys. Let's cool. not. Uh, let's Stay not. Cool. Uh, so, from one Cameron uh, to another Cameron to <clears throat> Jalex Hunt, who we have as a worst landing spot, landing with the Philadelphia Eagles. And John, this one for me is not so much about the player, which you know we can have that conversation as well, but it's just about uh, even with Hassan Reddick gone. They bring in Bryce Huff. Jalex Hunt lands in a situation now with uh, Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Nolan Smith, Julian Aquara. Um, it's just a very crowded room there. And even with third round draft capital, 95th overall, not the best spot for opportunity at the very least. It's not the best spot for opportunity. And I don't know a lot about Jalex Hunt. He, he was not on my watch list or on my board prior to the draft. I, I was surprised to see him go in the third round just because, what is he, FCS, I, I think, for, for out of Houston Christian or something like that? Yeah, Houston um, Christian I, I don't know University. where that is. That's <laughs> That's got to be FCS, right? I, I, I'm, Probably in Houston. I, I, yeah, <laughs> you would think it's in Houston. Yeah, it's actually in Kentucky. Uh, I just looked it up <laughs> right down the road. But yeah, that the, like you said, the opportunity is going to be the main thing. They got some great pass rushers o- over there that are that are definitely going to be playing ahead of him. So um, yeah, I, I, he's just not going to be on the radar. I don't think he's going to be somebody that we're going to be looking to draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should. Uh, I think Aaron maybe in the UK they lost a draft pick along the way because he was actually ninety fourth overall third rounds but yes very I think there was a forfeited room. pick in there somewhere because that might have thrown things off oh 
Ooh, okay. I think the Dolphins had a third round forfeited pick, so I think that threw the numbers off because they okay. still count. Yeah, these freaking forfeited picks, man. The Dolphins just yeah. keep screwing us with these picks, and now we're probably going to get the Falcons going to get banged now for uh, the tampering with Kirk Cousins' contract. So that'll affect next year's draft. Maybe they'll take away the Phoenix pick. There you go. That'd take Phoenix. Cool. Put him back to next year's draft. <laughs> Let him be twenty-seven when he gets drafted again. Uh, Addy, any thoughts on Jalex Hunt? I mean. Interesting. I mean, it's Philly, you know, they, they usually are pretty sharp when it comes to evaluating players and ad rushers. They've had a pretty good history of, of, of guys recently there. So yeah, it, it makes you, it makes you wonder, yeah, what you're missing. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. you know, this guy was the 11th ad rusher off the board in this class. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really good athlete, 9.22 RAS, um, Good size, six three and a half, two fifty two, thirty four inch arms, eighty three inch wingspan, and then it was. I mean, I mean, I know it's Houston Christian, but fourteen point two percent career pressure rate. That's not bad. Pass rush win rate his final year was eighteen point nine. He was Philly's third pick this year, behind the two cornerbacks. Also a solid tackler, eight point four percent career tackle rate. So I mean, who knows? You know. Bryce Huff was undrafted. Yeah. There's plenty of of cases where things like that happen. Jonathan Grenard, you know, I think he was a like a third, fourth round pick. Yep. Um, you never know. I like the team. I like the team. I like the team. It's a crowded room right now. Yep. But Josh he, Sweat, they tried to get rid of him all year. But we could we can continue to say, well, what happens when Brandon Graham is gone and Josh Sweat is gone? Well, they're just going to keep drafting defensive mm-hmm. linemen. So the the room is never going to be this true. like two or three edge group. Yeah. It's going to be five they or six have guys a rotation. Deep. And that's just how they build their team. They build their team along the trenches on bo- trenches on both sides of the, the ball. Trenches. So he's trying the to trenches. get the I'm trying to no, no, you. No, trying to make ain't you. So we want to wrap up here John with a few quick hitters. You had some other best landing spots that uh we wanted to hear more about starting with Jordan Tits McGee landing yes, with sir. the Washington Commanders. Uh, what did you like about McGee landing there in DC? Yeah, yeah, not to get too excited about like a, a fifth rounder, right? But I, I mean, I liked him as a player. I think he's got a good athletic profile. He was kind of impressive there um, coming out of college, like plays fast, plays aggressive, um, excellent range, 11.3% first contact rate, fourth best in this class. I think he had a 9.32 RAS, I, I think it was. Um, I could be wrong on that, but it was in the nines. Um, really good as a blitzer as well. I, I think that puts him in a nice spot in Dan Quinn's defense specifically because he's such a good blitzer, 37 pressures, 11 sacks, 90.7 pass rush grade in 2023 played very similar to Edron Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. John, let's just keep it rolling and hit up your next guy here. It is a, I believe edge rusher who landed with the bills. Javon Solomon. Talk to us about Solomon. Solomon, probably another one of those guys that I like for more for NFL than than for IDP. Probably going to be more of a rotational guy there in Buffalo. But he's like a to me, like kind of like a smaller kind of discount AJ Epinesa type player. So really good pass rusher. He's not a liability defending the run, even though, you know, he's a smaller player. I think he's six foot one under 250 pounds, but really explosive pass rusher has a good first step. Um, decent pass rush grade, uh, you know, in, in 2022, 81.5 and then improved that to 80. 8.4 in 2023 um, is 91.6 career pass rush grade is 89th percentile among prospects since 2016. He was productive um, over there at Troy as well. He even um, broke the the school record for sacks over Demarcus Ware and OC Humanura. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, but um, yeah, I, I like Solomon as just kind of an exciting, small, little, quick pass rusher. All right. And then last one, DB landing with the <coughs> Kansas City Chiefs. It is Jaden Hicks. What did you like about that landing spot? Yeah. So Hicks, I, I, I like I said before, I had him as my my safety one and, you know, it was starting to look pretty grim there. I, I, I don't mind the landing spot. I know Kansas City, you know, they've got some options over there um, in their in their safety room, but I, the, I don't think they're great options. I, I think there's room for Jaden Hicks to to work his way on the field. I think he does well in the slot. I think he pl- can play that box role really like which we love for for IDP purposes. He, he was really effective around the line of scrimmage. Um, 
Um, one of the best first contact rates in this class as well, 8.7%. Strong tackle efficiencies, top five in average depth of tackle versus the run as well. Um, really, really physical player. Um, you know, there's definitely missed tackle issues and stuff like that there, but I liked what he did as a coverage defender as well. He's got strong coverage instincts. I think he could stick with wide receivers downfield. He proved that against uh, Jalen Polk as well. Um, there, there's a really nice rep he has with him where he picks the ball off. And uh, yeah, I, I like I like Jaden Hicks. I think, you know, maybe not for 2024, but definitely one of those guys that I'd be keeping an eye on um, for down the road. All right, boys. So Jordan McGee, Javon Solomon, Jaden Hicks, any other ones you want to touch on besides that or any yeah comments on those three players? Like all those picks, uh, one that I'm a big fan of, Tyke Smith, landing there in mm-hmm. Tampa Bay. It may seem a little uh, cloudy right now, but I actually don't think it is. I, I mean, if you look at the usage for Tyke Smith, uh, he has played 67% of his snaps out of the slot. 21% were in the box, 7% were on the defensive line. So that's 95% of his snaps coming from the slot box or on the line. So I think he's going to be competition for Christian Isian, mm-hmm. who played 67% of the snaps out of the slot last year. Uh, he's just a versatile piece. I mean, they, there's there's a world where, you know, him and Winfield and Jordan Whitehead could all get on the same field or get on the field at the same time next season, I think. Uh, but also, I think. Tyke Smith is pretty good insurance for if they can't get a deal done for Winfield. Uh, I mean, Tyke Smith could be walking in, uh, walking into a really nice role next year. But I like him to get on the field a little bit this year just because of his versatility. But he's one of my favorite players in this class. He was my safety three going in. Um, he'll probably still be around there. 9.91% career tackle rate. That's uh, among the leaders in this class. And uh, yeah, early production at West Virginia got hurt uh, when he transferred to, to Georgia and it took him a little bit while to, uh, to get playing time, but senior year he, he broke out. And so I like this fit here in, in uh, Tampa Bay. Bobo, any uh, other quick hitters you want to mention here at the end? Yeah. Um, I have to also echo what Macri said. Oh, where's Twitter? There it is. Um, Jordan McGee. Yes. 9.92 RAS um, to reiterate lead team, total tackles and TFLs. Two-year captain, three-year starter. He didn't miss any games. Um, McGee is a guy that Daniel Jeremiah actually liked and talked about um, being a pretty headsy player through the combine process. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what a guy like Jordan McGee behind of Bobby Wagner can learn. You know, don't think there's going to be much there for him in 2024, but maybe for the future, definitely a guy to uh, to pay attention to. Um, two quick names I'll give you, just some guys that I've kind of liked. Cedric Gray. I think that's a really gonna, good landing spot bring there for him in uh, Tennessee. That's a pretty good landing spot. You know, we've like we pretty a lot. much talked about that um, um, the linebacker who Kenneth got brought Murray, in there. Jack Ken- Gibbons. Correct. Uh, you know, Kenneth Murray could really essentially be like a one-year deal if he doesn't play well, doesn't look right. Um, Cedric Gray, talented guy, sideline to sideline. Um, might lack a little bit upstairs in terms of like – you know, learning the NFL linebacking uh, process, uh, trying to, you know, set up a defense, look at what the offense is going to give you. So, yeah, Cedric Gray is a name that I like. And then another one, just because of need, um, I think he's going to play probably sooner than he's going to be ready for. But Austin Booker there in Chicago, Mm -hmm. they didn't really address anything on that edge until it looks like the fifth round there for Booker. Um, So Booker walks into a pretty primo situation opposite maybe Montez Sweat. So I don't know how many snaps Booker is going to play. He's super athletic, but he was pegged a little bit more as like a developmental type of guy. So I don't know what throwing him to the fire in 2024 is going to look like. Um, But those are definitely two guys that I kind of want to see, kind of want to see how, the off season and how training camp kind of unfold just to see if there's any buzz for those guys. I like it. We also didn't talk about Marshawn Neeland. He's yeah. in a pretty good situation there landing in Dallas. Um, Marcus Lawrence, I think is expiring after this year. He's yeah. He's getting old, you know, Inside Sam Williams. He was, he's been in trouble in the past. Yep. Hopefully he can get it together. I like Sam Williams, but yeah. you know, you never know. Dante Fowler's gone. Uh, they got to the commanders. Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong's gone. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's a path there. They took him what twenty fourth in the second round. Yeah, draft capital. Uh, Nine point zero eight RAS. So not not the worst. And then there's a 
couple other safeties that are kind of interesting. I think uh, Dadron Taylor Demerson's he's in a good spot there in Arizona. Buda Baker's probably going to be out of there at some point. Yeah. Um, and then Malik Mustafa landed in San Francisco. One hell of a tackler, probably one of the, the better tackling safeties in this class. 10.9% career tackle rate. Mm-hmm. That could work out as well. You know, I mean, it's, it's Hufanga is, I think is obviously safe, but I mean, Jair Brown, he's, he could be replaced. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, it will be free. This is the last year of Demarcus Lawrence's contract in Dallas. He is a UFA in 2020. So, I mean, yeah, he'll, um, Nealon will also be free. I'd say. Yeah. And also, I don't think he did the best PFF wise, but some nice edge, some nice edge landing spots for like yeah. sneaky. Yaya Diaby late season kind of playing time opportunities. Just Looks like uh, guys to keep it guys to pay attention to. Nealon was the uh, the sixth edge drafted. It's pretty good if you include Darius Robinson as an edge. What do you have him listed as an edge, John Darius Robinson? Yeah, I go back and forth with him. I I, I think I, he's probably going to play more interior. Um, yeah. I, I think that bigger. just makes more sense for him. Yeah, that's crazy. Then I mean because. So if that's the if if you're including Darius Robinson as a interior defensive lineman, that means Marshawn Nealon was the fifth edge yeah. after mm-hmm. Chop Robinson. So Law Two Turner versus Chop Robinson Nealand. Well, how close yeah. was he to being a first round pick? He was the one that was he getting, was two twenty four. Two twenty four. Okay, he was the one getting first round buzz. I was like, really, Marshawn yeah. Nealon? It went. But he him. was a he was a late riser that I thought, okay, I mean, not going to be shocked if this guy goes first round, but I still don't really see it. Yeah, I, he performed really well as like a run defender um, for yeah. us, and less so as a pass rusher. Like his pass rush stuff was, it was fine, but it was where it, as a run defender where he really excelled. So it'll be interesting. And I think he did well athletically as well. So yeah, I'm looking now. It looks like he had a 8.3 uh, percent career tackle rate. So that is really good. Also, uh, kind of interested a little bit in Trevin Wallace. That's an interesting yeah. landing spot oh, yeah. there for him in Carolina. Um, Macri, real quick, let me get your quick take on Jeremiah Trotter. What's your thoughts there with him in uh, Philadelphia? Yeah, I think it's going to depend a lot on uh, what they think of Devin White there and his, his one year tryout, right? Because I, I think Nicobe Dean, I News think he's going to have not great. Yeah, it's probably not going to be great, right? I am like from the future, seen... and it is not great. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen what it looks like, but yeah, Trotter was I I didn't think he would drop as far as he did. Obviously. Um, I, I think that fall was probably a bit excessive for him. Like I, I, not that I had him as my top linebacker or anything like that, but yeah. I thought he was better than what that draft capital suggests. At least he performed really well for us in our stable metrics and stuff. But I, I think it's a nice spot for him to at least kind of sit back and, and develop. And I mean, God, I, Devin White, I, I'd be shocked if he gets a contract extension there just based on his past, but it's not a bad landing spot, um, yeah. Philadelphia. What do you think yeah. about it? No, I agree. I think so too. I don't know what y'all's thoughts are, but I'm 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 moderately optimistic about it. I don't think there's any just world beaters in front of him. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, they did just roster uh Zach Cunningham and yeah. Shaq, Shaq Leonard, Leonard in 2023. Who still does so. not have a job, I don't think. No, no. That's where his daddy went too, right? Sure, right. that play. I like pick. that a lot. Uh-huh. Nepo baby landing where his daddy worked. <laughs> I, I like think uh, junior and senior. Um, the script writes itself. Um, real Start quick, yeah, I, I was looking kind of at some of the, the – that was – Mike was all over that. He had uh, Trotter way down in his ranks. He had him mm-hmm. as his ninth-ranked linebacker pre-draft. Um, and then I saw on his list Edif- Edifuan uh, Yulofosio, who landed with the Bills, which which I yeah. thought was a nice little landing spot as well for a very athletic linebacker. So what about, uh, we didn't mention Tyrese Knight. He landed in an okay spot. He yeah. landed there in Seattle. Yeah. I mean, it's Jerome Baker who's on a one-year deal. And then Tyrell Dotson, who was also on a one-year deal, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they took him in the fourth round. I thought they would go LB earlier. So I'm a little surprised yeah. by that. Um, but so, so yeah, he was the, he was the eighth linebacker off the board in this draft. Um, we, I know Mike's a big fan, solid athlete, 7.41 RAS. And then he was extremely productive at UTEP, 14.5% career tackle rate. Um, Yeah. So he's fine. I mean, that's, you know, it's not the scariest depth chart. They got a new DC, new head coach in there. So, um, yeah, I mean, you kind of like that he's going and getting a guy and it's a linebacker. Yep. Yeah. 
Something to pay attention to. Kind of throw Tommy Eichenberg into that same group. Where did Eichenberg land? The Raiders? Yep. Las okay. Vegas. Okay. That's not too bad. It's not like, it's not super, you know, high capital, but it's a- Him and Splane? Yep. Yeah. Together? I love that. Yeah. I love that. Get them over to Denver. Yes, let's get a trade. Pledge of Allegiance. John, um, you were telling me before we got on Mike in Slack that uh, I think it's for the offense you hate, or you love the landing spots and hate the players. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the defense, you hate the landing spots, love the players, I think is what it was, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, th- there's definitely offensive players I like, but I was lower on this wide receiver class, I think, a little bit than than most people. Um, I, I think some of them were a little bit overblown and then they landed in pretty good landing spots so that they have the potential to to emerge there. But I less excited about it and then yeah there there was some linebackers and, and edge rushers that i was kind of hoping for better spots but um eh, that wasn't terrible i guess for defense but um yeah i always have a hard time getting too excited about rookie idps right because we know that playing time is is hard to come by but there's definitely going to be guys especially those first round guys early second guys probably as well and, and junior colson i think are pretty safe bets here but uh yeah mm-hmm. Like I said, Addy, we got the mock draft episode coming up on Monday. So make sure y'all check that out. We've got a lot of our IDP show team members filling in to help us uh, do that as a live draft on the show. We'll break down our picks in the moment. So we'll kind of see where a lot of sharp plugged in folks are feel how they're feeling about these uh, IDPs and about these offensive players and these landing spots. But any big uh, Final thoughts, risers, takeaways, anything that kind of just kind of struck you here as we sit uh, at the completion of the 2024 NFL draft? Oh, gosh. I mean, I, it's another great year, another great draft. Um, I, I think you want to be patient. You know, I think we kind of preached that before going into to this draft. You just want to be patient. Let the value fall to you. I mean, is even as like as far as the edge rushers go, I mean, I don't I'm in a spot right now. I'm on the clock and none of those edge rushers have gone. Are so you on the clock right now? I'm on the clock right now. At what are you three, thinking? At 310. I mean, obviously, I'd love to get, I'd love to go Dallas Turner. He's what do you old. back up? 410? 410. Oh, are they going to be there? I 410. I'd, I'd say as soon as I take mm-hmm. one of these guys, then it's going to, everyone else is going to. You got to go Dallas Turner. You got to break I think, I think that's a great spot for one of those guys. Yes, that's that's really nice value. Fun. That's, that's really, really nice. ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, I, I think you just want to be patient. Don't, don't be a flag planner. You know, and no yeah. one cares. No one cares if you got your guy right. <laughs> and you're going to feel like an idiot when you plant your flag yeah, you're on someone. Like, really idiot. like a day on Henley who gets replaced a year later. Exactly yeah. right. So don't be cute. Let the value fall. Bobo, I think my takeaway is just like the thoughts we had pre-draft about this IDP class. Like, yeah. don't get cute. Just let the value fall to you in the late third, fourth, fifth round. I feel the same way because I think the IDP shook out about how we expected it was an offense dominated draft. And I feel like rookie drafts are going to be the same way. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, how many guys can we count on for sure in 2023 to get any type of meaningful snaps, maybe like five or six, you know, there will be some guys that have opportunity and yeah, there'll be some waiver camp, guys pop up but for right now. There's not a lot of guys that we know going into 2024 are going to see 400 snaps. You know be, a few, what I'm saying? be a few edge guys and yeah, maybe sure. some linebackers like going yeah. into the season that corners, can, a lot of corners. Yeah. yeah. A lot of aside from the corners, corners. Aside yeah, from the corners. That is a great point. And then maybe some safeties, you know, maybe yeah. some DTs. Um, some of these guys get starting roles and, and nice opportunities. Yeah. So. Cole Bishop year one should be starter. I would imagine. I would imagine. Unless so. they do something uh, not good and bring in like Justin Simmons. He's still lurking out there. That's too, true. Remember, I you know? forgot. Yeah. He's, he's about to waiting to kill somebody's yep. uh, IDP value. So, uh, uh, yeah. Any uh, final takeaways though, Bobo? You're putting together Mach 3.0. Is yeah. your head just like spinning right now? You know, I played basketball for like two and a half hours today. I don't know how you're old. still upright. <laughs> My back locked up about 30 seconds into the first game. So the fact that I was able to sit here and pod with John Macri for like an hour, <laughs> I'm super impressed with myself. Oh, we're so 90 Bobby, minutes in at this point, baby. Pat on the back. Good for you, buddy. Hey, not too hard, though. I got to hurry up and yeah, get don't some pat, Don't pat on that back too hard. It will lock up again. <laughs> That's my uh, final thought. Well, before gosh. Bobby goes, uh, has to be taken out of here on a stretcher, uh, we will let you guys go. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode. Best and worst landing spots. One of our favorite pods to do every year. John, we appreciate you hopping on here and talking about these IDPs and their new teams with us. Let the folks know what you got coming up over at PFF. 
Um, yeah, so I'll have a bunch of rankings out this week. I think uh, the first one is going to be offensive rookie rankings. It'll be one QB and super flex in there. Um, I'll have the IDP rookie rankings. Those will be out shortly after, I think, Tuesday. Um, I'm going to try to do combined offense and IDP one as well, like I did the year prior, and then updated dynasty rankings as well all this week. So big rankings week um, for me coming out of the draft. Uh, it'll be It'll be busy. Rankings week. We have the IDP show draft kit dropping on May 1st, which is Wednesday. So we will have uh, Mike Wollert's projections. I think he said he's up over 400 players projected now. Yeah. For the 2024 season. I'm in the sheets grinding right now. So I mean, you can get in there and take a look right mm. now, folks. I've started putting in the rookies into the existing dynasty ranks. I've started pretty much getting the one QB ranks together. And so that'll, you know, I'll be able to quickly mm. do the super flex, probably get those done tonight, honestly. So we're, we'll um, have, Rookie ranks ready for you all uh, when the draft kit goes live. Updated with Scott, uh, Adam, and Bobby's consensus in there. DM um, us if you if you have drafts yes. right now. Like seriously, yeah. we don't mind to help. You Absolutely, know? but we will get those rankings out as fast as we can. Thread count on them sheets getting higher and higher. Out of control. Softer, 2000, softer, 2000 thread count sheets. <laughs> we're talking like nice Christmas present from the parents right now. We got another cool thing coming too. We got we're gonna be. No, we can't uh, tell. Them. Yeah, we're not gonna tell you. No, it'll just be before you. <laughs> hey, well, if you want to check it out, uh, I'll put the banner back up. Check out the website, the IDP uh, The draft kit goes live May 1st, youtube.com slash at the IDP show. If you want to watch the show and leave us a five-star rating interview over on Apple and Spotify and for the PFF fantasy podcast as well. Do that for John Macri. Do it for us. Do it because you love us. And uh, we'll check you all on Monday. Hope you all enjoyed the draft. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, y'all take care. We'll see you soon.